This week on This Is Gravel, we have Gravel Worlds, what else? Hey, welcome to This Is Gravel. I am Bobby Thompson, and with me, as always, is... Neil Taylor. Neil, what's been going on in your life? Um, doing a lot of bike riding with uh, Matt. We've been getting out, putting down some big miles when we have been able to ride our bikes. That Matt? That Matt right really? there. The guy that's behind the camera, yeah. Uh, trying to get out, trying to ride bikes as much as we can. May or may not be trying to get ready for something. We'll see. Uh, but Not ready boy. to reveal that that part of it yet. Yeah, okay. but right. let me tell you, I am still sick and tired of it being hot. It's it's like 110 degrees today, with the heat I, index is, today. Today this might is, be the hottest day in Emporia, Kansas this year. It's ridiculous. So, I'm ready right for, around 100 degrees. I'm ready for a cool down, Bobby. Yeah. So what are you even up to, man? Uh, I, w- I just got done playing disc golf in this 100 degree weather, so that wasn't the <laughs> smartest thing in the world. But um, I've been riding a ton. Nice. So, uh, you know, I, I took a couple months off really for the most part there. And now we have a good slate of, uh, races coming up in the fall and not that I need to be competitive in them, but I'd like to, uh, not suffer as much as I, as much as, you know, I, I might. So trying to ride my way back into a little bit of riding shape. So it was, it was good. Went to gravel wars this last weekend, had a blast. Cool. Yeah. No, there's a ton. And you talk about events coming up and there's a ton of things coming up here on the calendar. Um, if you haven't looked, especially if you're local here, check out Bobby's Facebook page because I know you got a ton of events. There oh, I do. Yeah, I had the gravel list up there. I probably I could probably add a few more to that even. So yeah, I mean, there, there there are tons of things going on. I was looking at it last night, trying to think what do I want to do this fall. So definitely some good stuff coming up. But you mentioned Gravel Worlds. Mentioned Gravel Worlds, and yep. yeah, we're probably going to dedicate a good majority of today to Gravel Worlds. We had a blast up there as always. Uh, Craig Schmidt, uh, Corey Godfrey, and and the gang, the other volunteers up there. Um, yeah, it was it was a blast. So uh, I think if they did not have the largest gravel worlds, they probably came dang close to it. It was as far as attendance sake. Um, the first expo, they had the first expo this year, the day before. They're at uh, Schilling Bridge uh, Brew Pub. So yeah, it was a great time. Awesome. Well, I know Matt was up there this past weekend, and he shot some video for us, and I think he got a highlight reel that we're going to check out here. Awesome. Gravel Guru fans, hear your highlights from Gravel Worlds in 90 seconds. So yeah, great time, great uh, highlights. Thanks, Matt, for doing that. Matt and his crew, they were out there. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the coolest day in the world. It was a little muggy. Yeah, I heard it was a little bit hot up there. It must have been miserable for 150 miles, right, Bobby? I'm sure it was for 150 miles. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I signed up for the 150. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, 
I got talked into uh, doing the 75, and I will admit, it took me a while to commit to going down to the 75. You know, I've always been of the mindset, if the true event is X, then you should be riding X. But they introduced the 75 miler uh, last year, I believe, mm -hmm. and so this year, because of the way the summer had gone for me and stuff, I, I did do the 75. I knew I could have suffered through the 150. I know what that's like, suffering yeah. through the 150. You know what that's oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the 75 sounded kind of fun. So, and it was. We had a blast. We, uh, um, would you like to hear a little bit about the 75? I was going to say, I'd like to hear about it because I know I saw some social media from you and Jeff uh, this so, past weekend. I'd love to hear about So we made the most it. of it. Um, immediately from the beginning, I didn't know what we thought was we would ride hard for the first hour and then just set up, let everybody ride by us, right? Well, you get in that competitive mindset if you if you allow yourself. And sure enough, Jeff and our friend John were at the very, very front of the group on the rollout. And I was about 10 rows behind. So I'm like, okay, here we go. Uh, so much for the fun. So we, we get out, we hit gravel, and we weren't even a mile on gravel. We start going downhill. I'll look up. And in the distance, a mile or so down the road, I see a dude standing in the, a little silhouette standing in the middle of the road. Well, that can only mean one thing, camera guy. Yep. And I'm thinking, all right, dude, camera guy. So I holler at the guy next to me uh, and I say, uh, you know, is that a camera guy? Yeah, that's a camera guy. I said, let's charge the camera. And he looks at me, he's like, no, dude, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I, I was like, all right, screw it. So I jumped and I just, I went. I mean, I laid it all down and... I was so far in front of everybody, it was embarrassing. I actually <laughs> didn't mean to get that far in front of the pack because when I looked around, they were way back there. And I'm trying to slow down to this camera because now I'm the idiot, you know, the idiot who's charging way in front of everybody. And I don't know how to pose or what to do with my hands at this point. So I'm just kind of doing this as I'm riding and they're waving at me, turn, turn. So I made the turn and immediately when you make the turn, it was a hill. Okay, so now I really am the idiot because now the entire <laughs> pack is bearing down on me and I have no oxygen. I can't breathe. Um, my legs are light. You know how you get that light feeling when you're out of air? <laughs> and here I am in their way. So I didn't want to be that guy. So I got over into the, uh, the really super loose stuff on the side and I was done for the next 15 minutes. I, it took me, <laughs> I lost three miles right there on the main group. So I got my way back in and I chased cause I didn't know where John and Jeff were. We were supposed to have fun. Sure enough, 30 miles in, there's a gas station in Denton and there they are drinking beer. So 8.30, 8.30 in the morning, they're sitting down, they're having their beer, and I roll up, and I'm all hot, sweaty, because I've been chasing, and now i got to completely change my mindset. And it was like, okay, no, no, you said we'd go easy. And from that point, we did. It was a blast. We, uh, we rolled, and if there was any kids out selling stuff, we stopped everywhere. We didn't just roll in, stop, and go. We rolled in, took pictures, had a blast, um, and there were great families out. There's always a great support out there. Uh, we rolled into Malcolm, and instead of running in, grabbing food, running out, we went in. What do you got? Well, she was boiling hot dogs. All right, let's have some hot dogs, which I'm not a big fan of hot dogs on a hot day, on a hot ride, but you know what? It worked out okay. So we had hot dogs. We're sitting down. We're enjoying. We're chatting, and someone comes up and says, you know what? There's a tavern 10 miles up the road. All right, let's go do shots. So we hop back on the bikes, and we race to the tavern. I can't remember Raymond or Raymore or something like that. And... Uh, you know, the little hometown tavern go in and we had one round of shots. We had a beer and then someone came in and we're like, let's buy him shots. So we had another round of shots. And then we finally, after about half an hour, we figured, you know what? We might want to actually beat the leaders of the 150 back to town. So Bobby, you pull. <laughs> so hop on the bike and rolling. And I'll say this, there were numbers registering on the Garmin. But I wasn't sure which set to stare at because they were just kind of wobbling. And we just rolled. And we had a blast. So, um, you know, by the time we got to town, we were definitely hot, sweaty, tired. Had some, uh, had some, had a couple of the local beers at Silly Bridge. <laughs> and we had, you know, some good food. There's always great food there. And we got to see, the, I got to see the, uh, the finish of the main event, which I haven't seen a finish live of a main event. I couldn't tell you how many years, maybe since the last yeah. time I didn't finish DK, you know, 2012, 13, uh, cause I'm always out riding. So that was kind of fun to see. And you got to hang out with everybody, hang out with Craig, uh, more that day, Craig Schmidt. And I had a blast. Awesome. It was, I won't always do the lower amount. I like to do, it would have been a great day out on gravel. It was a great day for a lot of people. It was a perfect day 
in this season, in this time of the year, to ride gravel in Lincoln, Nebraska. And the roads are beautiful there. So I did, I did feel a little guilty about missing out on the views for that other 75. But when they all came in dead and tired and exhausted, I sure didn't miss that feeling. So well, You enjoy your day. You took it at a little bit different pace. Um, there's a place for that, too, out there in gravel riding. I think so. I mean, so. when you think about what we do, not all of us are going to be up at the front. Not yeah. all of us are going to be out there killing it. And there are times where it's fun to race. But there's also times where it's fun to just hang out, enjoy the ride, enjoy your company, and have a good day as opposed to getting to that finish line and wanting to die. Yeah, I I 100% agree. I do want to – one last thing that's pretty funny is the guy who who was next to me, Micah, who uh, said, no, I'm good, dude. He's actually the one who ended up winning the 75. (laughs) So apparently he knew what he was doing, and I did not know what I was doing. So (laughs) He wasn't going to blow himself up and then hit the big hill. (laughs) Right, right. No, it was a blast. Um, The 150. Real quick, uh, to go into the 150, um, everyone who towed the line, awesome day, yeah. awesome effort out there. Uh, we, Matt and his crew, did catch up with the winners, um, Allison and John. John was actually a local guy there. Allison came back and won her three third, for yep. her third, yeah, three P. They've been doing the the swords for two years now, so she's got the dueling swords all by herself. So, uh, interviews coming up. So John, walk us through the day out there, incredibly fast. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the fastest Gravel Worlds ever by a couple of minutes. So I'm really proud to be a part of that. Um, it uh, it started fast from the gun. A couple guys went up the road. Um, the big group stayed together for a long time. Uh, my tire was actually going low, uh, and my <laughs> I had a couple mechanical things, so um, I attacked a couple miles ahead of the first checkpoint so that I could get in there first, pump up my tire, and mess with my derailleur. Um, got that taken care of. I was still the first one out of the checkpoint, and after that, um, you know, I mean. Just kind of, kind of pushed it, and, and only about 10 guys made it out of that first checkpoint with the front group or so. I think maybe, maybe 15. Um, and after that, it was just kind of a numbers game, just a lot of attacking. Um, I was really lucky to have Matt Stevens, my teammate there. He's a killer racer. Um, so it was basically two of us, two CCB. Um, Brendan Hauser from DNA, uh, two of the giant guys at first. Um, so it was all—it was a pretty even group, honestly. So um, I, uh, it kind of got whittled down, um, and I, I attacked going into the little town of Sprague with maybe 30 miles to go. Um, I mean, I'm from Lincoln, so I have the benefit of knowing all these roads pretty well. So I, you know, use my crit skills to get through that town as fast as possible. And Eric Marcotte was the only one who was able to close the gap. And then it was just the two of us in the tailwind, and uh, you know, and we're both pretty cracked by the end. And I, I managed to get to the roundabout first, so that, that's that. What caused you and Eric to go off the front there? What what, what was that moment like? Uh, that that was really just me kind of feeling that the group was on the ropes a little bit and me knowing that it's a good place to attack because like the pave the pave section there benefits me a little bit and it's a crosswind for about a mile going out of Sprague so that makes it hard for people to get on the wheel and after that is tailwind for 20 miles so that's just just strategically it made a lot of sense and the group kind of sat up getting into that town and I just just went for it. So. You mentioned you're from Lincoln. What's it mean to win here today? Oh, it, it's huge. I mean, the guys who put on this race are an awesome group. Craig and, um, and Corey and uh, every everybody on the Pirate Cycling League. So I, I feel really honored to, uh, to bring the win home to Lincoln. I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody from Lincoln's ever won this race. Um, so it's it definitely, I think it means a lot. I, I think it's, it's just a, a big win for the community. Well, congratulations. Anything else you'd like to add about the day? Oh, no, just everybody, I mean, the race organizers did an awesome job. And, like, I've got to thank my team for, for all the great support. The, the factor bike that we ride is superb. Um, and the rest of the racers just put on an awesome, awesome race today. I was strongest field ever here, I think, and the fastest race like you saw. So it was a pleasure to be a part of it, man. Allison, first off, congratulations on the win today. Walk, walk me through how the day went out there. Um, it actually was a very fast start. Uh, for the first 100K or so, it was very race paced, so it was really challenging, but it was still cool, which was great. But um, people were definitely motivated to go hard at the start, um, so that made it challenging towards the end of the day, I think, for a lot of riders just due to the fast pace. And um, a little chaotic in that first checkpoint. Um, 
Yeah, I got dropped a couple times. Chase caught back on, got dropped a couple times. And I thought, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> this is your third time winning this. What does that mean to you? Um, it's just really special to come here to Lincoln, Nebraska for Gravel Worlds. Um, I love what the Pirate Cycling League does, and this community has really touched my life. So it's something that's really important for me to come back and support this event on um, the local cycling community and, of course, all the great people that put on the event. You know, going back to today's event, what was the last kind of like 50 miles like out there? I think the first half of the course was the hardest. I think that's where more of the elevation gain was, um, was in that first half. Um, but it was cooler and so if the last 50 miles were very challenging because it starts getting really hot and all those little rollers out there start seeming like mountains <laughs> and so yeah just constantly there's just no no rest for the, the weary out there. You know you've been up here to this event three years in a row what would maybe you tell someone that's never been to this event about why they should come out to it? I think it, Lincoln, Nebraska is definitely not flat and just cornfields. It's really beautiful. We saw some amazing animals and uh, weather was fantastic. The gravel isn't super technical. Um, you're probably not going to flat out here, so it's pretty fast conditions. So 150 miles seems daunting, but you know, you can get rolling pretty good on it as opposed to some of the other courses that are a little more challenging or technical. Um, so I think it's a really good start at a gravel event that um, can appeal to a broad range of audience. Anything else you'd like to add about today? It's just really special to be here. Um, I also got the QOM jersey, and I know that the local cycling community lost one of their favorite people. And so to see Sophia's daughter out there today um, trying a shorter ride, and the whole time I was riding, I was thinking about her, and she went out and tried her first gravel ride today, and she was thinking about me, and I was thinking when I was suffering, I go, you know, she's been through so much, and she's out here now challenging and taking up cycling like her dad's passion. So it's really cool. Awesome interviews, Matt. Thanks for that. Man, can you believe that? I mean, those paces up there for that race. No. Unreal. It was it was a fast year. The gravel was primo this year, definitely. Sweet. It's kind of, of course, the year that I miss out. It's the year that everything's <laughs> packed hard and primo. Um, speaking of the crew up there, I mean, what a what an awesome year, though. This is their 10th year doing Gravel Worlds. Uh, you know, an amazing thing, really, for an event to be around that long. And they've built it up, really, from the ground up. Um, and Corey and Craig and the rest of the crew up there have done a great job with that. I know Matt had a chance too to talk to Corey um, a little bit about the race and everything going on up there in Lincoln. Corey, 10th anniversary out here. What does that mean to you guys? Wow, it's been 10 years. It's hard to hard to believe that. Uh, it means a lot seeing as many people out here. Uh, it was a great turnout today. We're celebrating our biggest turnout so far, and it's just great to see that you know the ethos of our event has stuck the same for the whole 10 years, you know, keeping it grassroots, keeping it fun, you know, really focusing on, you know, people finishing, having a great time. So I think we accomplished that again today. 10th mm -hmm. year, I don't know for sure if it was the fastest year ever, but what was today like itself with this race? Today actually was record time. Uh, we were close to a sub seven hour finish. It's like 702 and some change. So it seems like every year it just keeps getting faster. And, uh, you know, this year, um, I think it was a very talented group of riders. Um, so, you know, it was fantastic to see everyone here today. I'm really stoked on that. As a race promoter, what does it mean to you when you see all these people start to show up in your home community? Uh, it means a lot. You know, it means we have a lot of local support. And, you know, just by also the number of volunteers we have here today, you know, we've had a record number of volunteers, probably close to 100 volunteers just here in Lincoln at the Fallbrook area and the surrounding communities. So it means a lot to us. It means that they're behind us. They support this event. They want to see it continue. And it means a lot to them. Someone seeing this interview that wasn't here today, what would you tell them about coming next year? Well, you know, if you want to come have a great time on the gravel roads, you know, the Nebraska motto is Nebraska nice. We like to stick to that. So everyone here is super nice out on the gravel roads in the small town communities. Um, everyone here is, especially Schmitty. You guys are awesome. Thanks, you guys. Um, everyone just done a, a great job, and we want to see people here. So come here, bring some friends, have a great time. Anything else you'd like to add about today? Uh, well, I want to thank all our sponsors, you know, all our volunteers. We want to thank you guys for coming again. It means a lot to us. We want to thank everyone who came to Lincoln and uh, shared this experience with us. And we want to welcome everybody back next year and bring some friends. Love me some cornbread. Um, he's been around, you know, there forever. He was one of the first people that uh, I remember hearing about as I started riding gravel. Um, his finish at the DK early on into when, when the DK started and uh, he's just always been so easy to talk to for anybody and everybody to just walk up and chat. I even walked up to him that morning and uh, 
you know, the race is starting. They're all super busy. And I was like, man, you guys got any coffee back there? Just joking. And he's like, you know what? We do. And he walks back in. He, you know, get coffee, and he gets me a text set up. I was like, okay. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. He's a great guy. A- again, so. there's some different ways to do race promoting, and you can go into it relaxed and yeah. chill like that and have a good time. You can be really high, strong, and stressed out. And, and you know, that's one of the things, like you say, you love about Corey. Got, yeah. you know, a chance to talk to him a lot last year up there. And just just a great, great, great yep. guy. Yep, so. all of them. So, uh What's next coming up, Neil? What's next? Well, a lot of high school cycling stuff. School this past, getting started. Yeah, this past week we actually had an activities fair that we jumped out at the high school too and um, had a lot of kids with interests that are signed up that want to know a little bit more about riding bikes, some that have some experience, some kids that I talked to that you know they've ridden in the past with the Boy Scouts um, or maybe ridden in the past with the middle schools or just on their own. Mm-hmm. They're saying, you know what, yeah, I want to either A, go out and do something like a Dirty Kansas, mm-hmm. or I've done maybe the high school race or the 50 or something in the past, but I'm ready to maybe try to give the 100 a go, but I need some you know, help, coaching, whatever it might be. So um, it's going to be really exciting. I think we're going to have a lot larger group than last year, which I kind of anticipated would be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, last year we didn't anticipate what we did have, um, and we had a lot of kids last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, had seven different kids that participated in Dirty Cans on some level. Um, some kids that got out to other local races as well. And, I mean, that's kicking off full steam here. School started, I guess, for their first full week here yesterday. And so um, I anticipate a lot of time over the coming months being spent on bikes with these kids. That'd be good, too. Yeah. What do you got going on? Uh, I'm going to keep riding bikes. Yes. Um, let's see. Pony Express, Marysville, okay. Kansas, comes up in three weeks. And then two weeks after that, go up and do Bleeding, Kansas, Manhattan. And then, and then, and then, and then. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's a great calendar year yeah. uh, this time of year for a lot of rides. And uh, I might even end up with a little mountain biking down in Stillwater in November. So, awesome. um, yeah, it's, it's great times coming up. Sweet. We'll look forward to this fall. A lot of things going on. Um, and we look forward to getting to see you guys again here sometime soon. See y'all.